Cheers, everybody. What is up? It is Whiskey Wednesday night here on the Mash and Drum. Thanks for coming in, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. This is going to be a really fun night. Uh, have a fun show lined up, including the stars of the show. We're going to be tasting... Let me move that out of the way. These two Buffalo Trace uh, kosher releases that released just after Passover this year. Going to be comparing it to Weller Special Reserve and also regular Buffalo Trace. Uh, that should be fun. I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm this close, a few hours from turning 43. So uh, my birthday is coming up. So we're going to be having some epic pours tonight. And uh, this will be an interactive night, guys. Definitely, uh, I want you to let me know, like, what bottles you want me to try. If you want me to do any blind heads to heads tonight. Um, you know, I have every bottle at my disposal. We'll be doing some giveaways. It's going to be a real fun night tonight. So... Um, thanks for hanging out. Let me uh, check in with the chat real quick. Uh, ba, 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 ba. All right, back. Ryan Tarpey was first in the chat. Thanks for coming in, man. John Gresham was here nice and early. Tim Gorgeous. What's up, Tim Gorgeous? <laughs> it was nice to see you here, man. Uh, Karen B. Ford, always lovely to see you. How are you? Uh, Tom R. is in the house. He came in early as well. Uh, then we had, let's see, Keith Schmidt is here. How you doing, man? Uh, how do you whiskey, buddy in good old Illinois? What's going on, man? James Taylor's here. Always nice to see you. Uh, let's see who else. We have Jim Muller's here. Jim Muller, you got your uh, your beautiful um, your flask and your uh, your sample and your hat is on the way. Um, hope you enjoy it when you get it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brian Brennicky, what's up, man? Always nice to see you, Alex Scavo. What's up, buddy? A brand new Patreon right there. Thanks for coming in. Uh, DT is here. Uh, Meredith McCurry is here. Wheels, what's up, Brandon? Uh, Cohen is right here. Spencer Mav, Andrew Buchanan, Ryan Ainge, uh, Richie Z, the, the wonderful Richie Z is here. Lanny Lancaster, Donald Rance, what's up, buddy in Canada? Bourbon Sane, of course. Chris just wrapped up an awesome, awesome live stream. Uh, glad you were back tonight, buddy. I, I like doing the back-to-backs with you on Wednesday, so I'm glad you, uh, you were live tonight. Uh, Hot Buttery Rolls in the house. What's up? Guys, go check out Hot Buttery Rolls. Give him a subscribe. New channel on YouTube already. He's a man after my own heart, talking a little bit of history on the channel, doing some great tasting notes as well. Um, great things to come from Hot Buttery Rolls. Ryan Ainger already came in with a $5 super chat. It says, happy birthday. Thanks for the views. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Trev Wilson, of course, is here. The wrench, my wrench. What's up, buddy? Uh, people saying happy birthday, Brian Griffiths, Rebecca Page, wildlife and whiskey. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. Christopher David is here. Uh, people catching up. Keith Daniels here. Jamie Williams, uh, Gabriel Politis. What's up from Philly? What up, Philly? Christopher David, what year was Jason born? Yes. 1977. I was born. That was my year. Uh, I actually missed Andrew Buchanan who came in with a 999 super chat. Happy early birthday. You definitely look younger than Dan. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Poor Dan. Uh, badass shirt. Yeah, man, I got this. This is from, uh, from Tennessee. This was, um, I got this at Bell Mead or I should say Greenbrier distilling. Uh, so such a cool place over there. Will Henderson, 499. Happy birthday. With that, I'm going to uh, have, oh, there, there, you got the macho man. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, all right, so I think I'm going to take a pour of this probably, I, don't, I know a lot of people raved about last year's birthday bourbon, but I really love the 12, the 12 year or the, uh, the 2018. I just think that extra year just gave it a really good balance of some oak presence and this is just getting more cherry and chocolate as it opens up. I am running low. I'm hoping to get a bottle this year. We'll see what happens. But cheers to uh, everyone hanging out tonight. Cheers. Uh, I really appreciate the birthday wishes. Thanks for coming in. Whiskey Wednesday. Oh, that's so damn good. David Hatton says, holy cow, you're young. <laughs> Let's see. Holy shit. Christopher David, 43. Happy birthday to turning 43. 
Damn, Christopher. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Christopher David is one of my legendary drummers. I really appreciate the support, man. That was really nice of you. Thanks so much. Very, very cool of you. Thank you, Chris. That's awesome. Woo, cheers to that. Um, I'm just sipping Weller Special Reserve. Okay, so uh, while I'm sipping that, I also got this awesome Old Forester uh, barrel pick this week. Actually, you know, I don't own any Old Forester single barrels. Um, this is the one that I do own. Um, I, I don't know, I just always kind of was hesitant to pull it, you know, pull the trigger on 90 proof. Plus the ones that I really saw came out of Total Wine. I've had some real stinker picks from Total Wine, so um, this one was local to Ohio and just was an awesome, awesome uh, pick. So uh, whoever picked this out in Ohio, this is an awesome pick. I love it. Not too much banana profile in it. It's very caramel. It's very vanilla. Very uh, little hint of chocolate there. It's a delicious pick. Um, let's see here. We got, did I miss one? Did I miss a super chat? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, let's see. Love the top 10 flight fight. Keep up the good stuff and happy birthday. Oh, all right. So yeah, so the top 10. So if any of you haven't watched it yet, I took, um, so there was an article posted, uh, from Fred Minnick. Uh, oh wait, hold on. We got some more super chats coming in. Ethan Turk. Happy birthday, Jason. Love the content. Keep doing what you do. I really appreciate that, Ethan. Cheers to you. Thanks for the support. Uh, Tim Gorgeous says Rare Breed versus Old Forester 1920. Oh, that's a good one. The Rock Cut Review. Happy of birthdays. Look at you, you young devil. <laughs> Cheers to you, Ed. Thanks for coming in, man. I cannot wait. So Ed is getting a special uh, sample of Jep the Creed. Since he likes to taste gnarly stuff, he's, he's getting it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it, Ed. No, You know, I don't know. Ed, my, you know, I don't know if Ed will actually like that stuff. Ed, Ed definitely likes some some different whiskeys. He may find it kind of interesting, uh, but we'll see. I'm I'm looking forward to hearing your review of that one. Uh, happy birthday, young pup from Patrick Fulmer. Graduated high school in 1976. Oh, <laughs> all right. So yeah, I'm a young pup, but still, man, I really appreciate the support, Patrick. You're a young buck too, man. It's all good. You're drinking whiskey. You're here. Richie Z with a super chat. Happy birthday, bro. James Taylor, thank you for your many. What is your best X alternative videos? Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I put a lot of work into those videos. But, all right. So, speaking of the videos. Uh, so, Fred Minnick put up an article in August about Drizzly, which is the online... Um, yeah, the <laughs> chapter is a huge sacrifice. By the way, at the end of the night, I'm killing this bottle. It's going to go away. It's time to kill the Jephtha. Goodbye. I don't want to see you anymore. That's it. This will actually make a cool infinity bottle, though, I think. Great bottle design. Just what's in the bottle is not so great. Um, so, so Drizzly, which is an online liquor uh, delivery service, um, they released a bunch of data about what people were buying. They have about 2,100 locations. You know, not the biggest, you know, slice of the pie when it comes to people ordering Obviously, a lot of it's going to be a younger crowd, you know, buying, um, you know, millennials, they said, made up about a little bit more than half of their uh, customer base. Um, but it was astonishing to see what the top 10 were, with Bullet being number one. Uh, no Wild Turkey in it at all. And I know people were like up in arms, like, how is there no Wild Turkey on this list? Um, but Buffalo Trace was on there, Woodford Reserve. There was no Old Forester bottle on there as well. Hey, Brazers in the house. What's up, Brazers? Keep it clean, browsers. Tammy Brennicky is here. What's up, Tammy? Always lovely to see you as well. Um, yeah, it will haunt my dreams, Trev. You're right. So, so, uh, so the top two in the first round were Buffalo Trace and Woodford Reserve. They took out Makers, Jack Daniels, and um, what was the third one that it took out? Uh, I had them up here. Oh, and, uh, and Basil Hayden. That was the last one. Uh, just got another super chat here. Hey, my bourbon journey. What's up? Happy birthday, brother, from another mother. Cheers, buddy. Hey, cheers to you. That is Scotty from my bourbon journey. You guys, if you guys aren't subscribed to him or following him, you're missing out on some great reviews. Um, 
Scott is probably the, the first supporter I ever had when I started my channel. So he is my brother from another mother. So cheers, man. Appreciate that. Uh, Brian Brennicke, your 43rd year on this earth deserves better than Jephtha. Oh, I got some good stuff lined up. We're going to drink Jephtha at the end. <laughs> uh, Sacramento, what about the kosher stuff? Yeah, we're going to be diving into that uh, very shortly. I'm going to go through the news. A um, couple of news stories came out. Uh, I found a new story about the new Blood Oath coming out. Um, so that should be interesting. Uh, then once we're done with that, we're going to dive into the kosher whiskeys and compare them. Uh, go through what made them kosher, the process a little bit. Hey, Bourbon Bunnies is here. No, I am not Jewish. Uh, Sacramento, I'm not Jewish. I'm just, uh, these seem to be the, the store that I work with in New York got these in. And I'm like, yeah, why not? Let's try them. I feel like, uh, you know, we'll, it'll be a good way to kind of compare and contrast between what Buffalo Trace has now and these releases, which will be uh, annual releases now from here forward. Joseph Brazel says, it ain't your birthday. Uh, it will be in about four hours. Actually, three hours. Three hours will be my birthday. A little less than three hours, actually. Jamie Williams, what two store picks are almost always a buy for you? Oh, that's easy. Um, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel uh, is always an easy buy store pick for me. That's probably my number one. And number two would probably be... Hmm, oh, Knob Creek... Knob Creek single barrel store picks. As long, you know, if they're like 10, 11, 12, in that range, 14, 15 years old, those two are usually no-brainers for me. I get those immediately. Um, Russell's reserve picks, I, I like to see that it's from that Camp Nelson F warehouse just because really, really good picture coming out of there. Or uh, Camp Nelson, I'm sorry, or the or Warehouse A, um, which is just pr produces some great juice. Warehouse D as well, if you ever see D. Gotta love the D. Uh, they call that warehouse delicious because it's so many good picks come out of that warehouse. So that's what I, I look for. So those are the probably the top two. Um, so yeah, the second round, which I posted today for that Drizzly, the top 10, um, really that one was kind of a no-brainer. So Bullet was in that lineup and, well, I don't want to spoil it, but Knob Creek came out on top, but you'll see... You haven't watched it yet you got to see what came in second because it was kind of a struggle uh but my final round after i picked those top four i'm throwing wild turkey 101 in the mix and an old forester i'm gonna have six drams in that lineup just to test it out because there's no wild turkey there's no old forester i figure if any um of the younger crowd that orders from drizzly are watching i want them to you know see what they're missing out on well this is of course you know, maybe seeing if, or, uh, you know, looking ahead that Wild Turkey and Old Forester Signature will do well in the blind against Woodford, Buffalo, Trace, Knob Creek, and, um, and the other one. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, we have, uh, we have some A and F Russell's single barrel picks here, Rebecca Page. Yeah, the F, those are the ones you want. Um, Lord, I hope he is their bourbon expert. <laughs> Have you tried the 120 proof uh, knob? Is that Knob Creek nine year? Um, Beth Higgins. Um, yeah, I have one up there. It's delicious stuff. I could do a quick review of it a little bit later. I can open it up for you, but I have had it. Um, I think I'm going to do, what do you guys think? Should I do the 86 or the 100? I feel like since everything on that list is kind of a lower proof except for the Knob Creek, Knob Creek is the one outlier. It's 100 proof. Everything else is 90 and under. So I don't know if I should put the Old Forester 86 or the 100 in there. I don't know. Uh, Z-Man says, happy birthday, Jason C. Got some Old Forester single bow from Arizona. Slightly hot and fruity. Cheers, brother. Cheers to you, Z-Man. Um, yeah, so I'd be curious to see, like, how that pans out. Um, but before we get into the news, guys, I got a bunch of new patrons the last week. And I have to say thank you to all of them. Um, Lanny Lacaster says 100. Hey, Jeff Perkins came in with a five dollar super chat. Cheers, man. I appreciate that. 100. Give something the chance to compete with the knob. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to do the 100. Absolutely. Rebecca Page. Hey, do you get to choose what warehouse your picks come from when you do a barrel pick? Um, with turkey, I don't know. I've never been involved in a turkey one. 
I would imagine most of the picks now are coming from Camp Nelson. So if you get an F or, or, an, or, uh, or an A, and I've heard that the picks, doing a barrel pick at Wild Turkey is like one of the best experiences. Eddie Russell will just keep pulling out barrels until you find something special. It's not like Buffalo Trace was where you get four. Then, it's, then you have to share a glass because they don't give you enough glasses. You got to share one glass of Buffalo Trace. Then after you taste it, they're like, all right, get the hell out of here. So a little bit of a different experience. <laughs> Hey, Silverlock Whiskey Club um, says, happy birthday, Jason. Poured some ECBP B520 to celebrate your birthday. Thank you, man. That's an epic pour for uh, to celebrate. Cheers to you. So I uh, wanted to say thanks to my new patrons, uh, including Robert Greenfield, Ryan Peach, uh, Daniel Holmes, Dennis Woodman, Mark Fenton, Mike D. Franklin, Cletus. That's right. Cletus is a new Patreon. Uh, Chris Benny, Alex Scavo, and Jeffrey Wack. So all of you guys became patrons this week. Thank you so much. Um, then you see some of the legendary drummers that are up there, including Brian Brennicky, uh, Christopher David, Karen B. Ford, Hank Butts. Thank you guys so much for the unwavering support that you give the channel. Uh, really appreciate it. So let's hit the whiskey news real quick. Uh, let me just pull it up. And then once we're done with the news, we're going to dive into the Buffalo Trace bourbons. Um, Jeff Perkins, are you already accepting Blendageddon entries? Um, details for, blend, for Blendageddon will be next week. I'm going to do the reveal show, how it's going to work, um, the different categories, and then we'll go from there. So stay tuned for next week. You guys will get all the details for Blendageddon 2020. Going to be epic. All right. First news story up for those of you guys that are McAllen fans, the McAllen double cask 15-year and 18-year have debuted. Um, this was added to the brand's portfolio globally this month, along with the double cask 18-year and the 15-year. Um, these are single malt whiskeys, which mature in sherry season American oak and European oak casks. Um, the whiskeys were blended and bottled at 43% ABV. These joined the McAllen double cask 12-year, which debuted in 2016. The McAllen 15-year will retail for 135 <gasps> which is actually not too bad for a, for a McAllen, but the double cask 18, a huge jump, three years more from 135 to 355. I mean, okay. So for three more years of age, I got to pay, I mean, Jesus, that's over $200 more. That's crazy. I don't know. McAllen is smoking something. Uh, AJ Lopez, he says, this fucking guy, Jason C., happy birthday, man. I'm stuck at work till midnight, so I'll pout, uh, pour one out when I get home. Just stopping in to wish you well, brother. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Cap and make it happen. John Picard is in that. says, happy birthday, you beautiful boozy bastard. <laughs> Cheers, John. Always nice seeing you in the chat. Thanks a lot for coming in, man. Yeah, I mean, a two over $200 jump for three years. That's crazy. Yeah, they could keep that one. Um, I've had a pour of the 15. I did like that. I thought the 15 was pretty good uh, for a McAllen. Again, I think I still think it's a little pricey. But I have a Glen Scotia sitting over there from Campbelltown. It was a 15-year-old scotch for 15 bucks. I'm uh, not 15 bucks. Uh, for like $85. A 15-year. So, And that thing is delicious, and I liked it better than McAllen. So I'll stick with that. Uh, let's go to the next one, uh, which is something out of Wyoming whiskey. Now, if you guys have never heard of Wyoming whiskey, this is a distillery that's creating grain-to-glass whiskeys. Um, Wyoming whiskey actually makes one of my uh, alternatives to Weller. Uh, they do a great uh, weeded bourbon. I think that's just going to get better with some age. Um, one of those other uh, great distilleries with, uh, with influence from Nancy Fraley. Um, let's see that one to go through that one. So this one is called the hole in the wall. It's a limited edition straight bourbon available exclusively in the state of Wyoming. It's made from eight select barrels that were aged for five years and is bottled at 99 proof. The name hole in the wall refers to a remote and secluded mountain hideout in hot springs County used by outlaws in the late 19th and early 20th century, such as the Logan brothers, Jesse James, uh, Butch Cassidy's Wild Bunch Gang. This is um, available this month. The price wasn't announced, but 
if you live in Wyoming, that's a pretty badass whiskey. I love the story on that one. Just to be associated with like Billy the Kid and um, uh, Jesse James and Butch Cassidy, that'd be freaking awesome. So uh, I kind of like that release. So lastly, we're going to go to a bunch of different labels. And here they are, including that one on the top left. That's the new Blood Oath. That's pack number seven. Um, this is keeping an eye on all those label approvals that go through the TTB. Uh, so what we know about that beautiful Blood Oath Bourbon Pack 7. This is the next limited edition bourbon from the brand expected early next year like it usually comes out. Finished in Sauternes wine casks. So standard for the series. going to be bottled at 49.3% ABV. Blood Oath always does a cool... Um, uh, cool finish on their releases. This one happens to be Sauternes. So, uh, should figure to be pretty good release. Sauternes is a, it's a French wine. So, should add some pretty good sweetness to it. Blood Oath is usually a pretty, I don't know, the last couple ones, the rum I wasn't a huge fan of. It was pretty good. Got a little sweet. Uh, I love this year as I love the cognac finish. Be interesting. The, any Sauternes whiskey I've had, the Sauternes isn't super heavy. And that might be good. Um, next up, we have 40 Creek Resolve, which is a 2020 Canadian limited edition release for the brand. Um, charred oak, high spice staves, and vintage starward wine uh, were added uh, to, the, to the blend. Um, this is bottled at 43%. We have Dewar's Portuguese Smooth. It's the next release in the Smooth series. This features a mezcal and Caribbean rum finish. That sounds actually pretty damn interesting. Uh, from Dewar's. Um, mezcal obviously adds, that's, so that's basically like a smoky uh, liqueur out of, uh, that usually comes out of Mexico. Um, and then you have the Caribbean rum. So that should be smoky and sweet. Uh, Kogaliki, exceptional cast series, 24 year, limited edition. Uh, that one is 24 years old, one sherry casks, uh, non-chill filtered, 52.2% ABV. Then you have the Glenmorangie Malaga finish, that's a 12-year-old scotch. Unsure if this will be a permanent addition, but would be a nice fit at the moment. Glen Morangi has a sherry port, sauternes in the permanent range. Um, this is First Fill Malaga Dolce Wine. It's a sweet fortified dessert wine from Spain. Matured for 12 years, 47.3% uh, non-chill filtered. That one actually might be pretty good. I might check that one out. So that is it for the news. Uh, let's go back here, guys. Thanks for uh, for hanging out, listening to that. Um, some pretty cool stuff coming down the pipeline. Anyone excited for that blood oath? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, Malaga's wine. Uh, let's see. Mark Rea. Yellow Spot is partly aged in it. Yes. Uh, when is Stag Junior Batch 14 coming out? <laughs> FFS. I don't know. Um it's been weird with releases, even here in Ohio. So Booker's Batch 2, usually I have that really early. I usually get the Booker's Batches really early. I haven't seen the Booker's, uh, the second batch yet here in Ohio. I know it's it's hitting in Kentucky. Um, not sure when it's going to get here, but usually they release pretty early here. Um, all right. So it's time to get kosher. So... Let me show you the graphic here, what these two bottles are. Um, we have Buffalo Trace Kosher Rye Recipe. So the rye recipe is, as it was explained to me, is what you would see uh, basically from their regular Buffalo Trace line. That's their rye, uh, rye-based bourbon. So, if, so compare it to Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, um, bourbons like that. Their kosher wheat recipe, also eight years old. This is basically the same recipe as used in Weller. Uh, again, also eight years old. The proof points were interesting to me, though. Uh, these come in at 94 proof, not the usual 90 that you would find in Weller Special Reserve or, uh, or Buffalo Trace uh, bourbon. So I thought that part was really interesting about it. Now, the thing that makes this um, uh, kosher is... So they, so Buffalo Trace did a partnership with the Chicago Rabbinical Council. Um, so what they did was is they oversaw the sale of New American Oak kosher barrels 
in a contract of sale to a non-Jewish executive, Buffalo Trace Distillery President Mark Brown, where they were filled with whiskey and put away in specially marked kosher whiskey barrels to age. That's what the press release said. Um, the barrels were filled with one of three wet mash bills. There's also a straight rye release that I wasn't able to get quite yet. Um, the barrels were then aged eight years, bottled at 94 proof, uh, as you um, found out. Apparently, this is a milestone in the spirits industry to produce a, kosher, a truly kosher whiskey. Um, basically, what also happened was when they were bottling these, uh, they also had to make sure that no, none of this whiskey that was going into this bottle uh, came in contact with any non-kosher whiskey or bourbon. Now, some whiskey or bourbons are already kosher based on because they are naturally made. Uh, but I don't think nobody has gone to such lengths to, you know, get a rabbinical society to come in to bless the barrels, bless the whiskey, the grains that were used, the water that was used, everything that went into this. Um, apparently all the lines for filling the bottles were all cleaned out to make sure that nothing came in contact with uh, liquid that came before it uh, to fill these bottles. So um, on the back of the bottle, well here, I'll give you guys kind of a closer look at the, the label here. So that's the wheat recipe. Um, yeah, these, these, uh, these are MSRP for about 40 bucks, which is actually a pretty good price. Uh, for a 94 proof Buffalo Trace, that's not bad. Uh, on the back, it kind of gives you a breakdown. Um, specifically designated kosher barrels in order to satisfy Passover requirements. Uh, ensuring the bottling lines were cleaned beforehand, as I mentioned. No contact was made with non-kosher spirits. Released after Passover each year, these will be coming out. So, I missed a couple super chats, guys. So, I'm going to go back here. I want to say thank you. To B. Berglund, thank you so much, man. Says, keep them coming. Cheers. Uh, Andrew Buchanan actually says, I love pack six. I can't wait for pack seven. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that soft turns one. It should be pretty good. Uh, let's see here. And then Joe Pastrana, what is up, buddy? He says, happy birthday, Jason. You the man. Cheers. Cheers. I appreciate that. Tom R. Jason, I think Koval in Chicago makes only kosher whiskey and other spirits. Yes. Koval is actually another... Um, I don't know if I would call it a competitor, but they do make kosher spirits. Uh, let's see here. The evolution was nine years in bourbon barrel, three years in Exaw turns cast. But oh, okay, that's something else. That's Peter White. What's up, Peter? I didn't see you come in and say hi. Cheers, buddy. Um, you have to do a comparison to non-kosher. Oh, yes, I'm definitely doing that. But first, we're going to try these. So I am opening these uh, live right here. I have not popped these open yet. So we're going to start with the wheat recipe first. Let's pop this. This is for ADHD whiskey. America. Um, let's get a pour of this one here. All right. And then we're going to put the rye recipe aside right here. Um, I want to compare this to Weller Special Reserve. All right, those are some big boy pours. All right, so here's the kosher. And then, hey, uh, we have a super chat from Meredith McCurry. It says, happy birthday, Jason. Excited to hear your review. We just, we just picked up these two. Oh, very cool. Uh, let's see. Hey, Chris Benny's in the house. Hey, you made it, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Daniel Altry came in. Says, happy birthday, pal. Cheers. Appreciate that, Daniel. Thanks for coming in, man. All right, so... Weeded recipe. These are the same recipes, guys. Just one's kosher, one's not. Nine years old. I'm sorry, eight years old versus, I think, six to eight in the special reserve, I believe. So let's see here. The noses are very similar. Nothing, nothing too different here. your typical weeded bourbon profile. You definitely smell the wheat in there. A lot of fruit, a lot of vanilla, a little bit of caramel.
you definitely get that buffalo trace that um, I always call it a toasted pecan note that I, that I usually get with buffalo trace. And again, that buffalo trace sweetness, very sweet, very candy on the nose. The Linux cat, what's up, Donnie? Finally made another live. Yes, nice to see you, man. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, very straightforward. Nothing mind-blowing. It just smells like a really good weeder. A lot of fruit, a lot of vanilla, a little bit of caramel there. Slight oak presence, not too much. It's more on the sweet side. Let's uh, go for a sip, guys. Cheers. Mmm. That is good. Uh, Thrasher, che uh, cheers, Jason. Keep rocking into the same test blind. Interested to see what you think. Happy birthday. Thanks, Thrasher. Appreciate that, man. Cheers to you. This is coming across super fruity to me. Like... Almost like strawberry, raspberry, getting a ton of fruit in this one, cherry, definitely a little bit of like vanilla cake in there, definitely a lot of vanilla too coming through, a little bit of oak spice, not a lot. I like the kind of little bit of a warmth it's giving me at that 94 proof point. I don't remember ever getting that with Special Reserve. I kind of like the little bit of, you know, a little bit of burn it's giving me. William Edwards just came in. What is up? Says happy birthday. Thank you so much, William. I appreciate that. Um, Cohen says, would Abraham, Moses, or Jesus drink that stuff? Uh, probably. <laughs> the more I drink it, the less fruitier it's getting and the more caramel and vanilla it's getting and some of those weeder the weeded bourbon profiles are coming through kind of like that that dusty note that you get sometimes in a weeder but i think it's really good it's full flavored i mean it's not it's you know it's nothing overly complex here it's just a solid weeded bourbon from buffalo trace it's really good the flavors i will say are very they're very straightforward there's nothing really hiding. Uh, you know, the flavors are clean. They, they jump forward. I mean, when you taste this, you definitely get a big punch of fruit, the vanilla, a little bit of oak spice there. Um, the vanilla note is really nice. It's like a vanilla cake note I'm getting, which is really good. Vanilla frosting, maybe. Then you add that fruit on top. One last sip, and then we'll compare it to the, to the, to the Weller Special Reserve here. Yeah, and the more I sip it, eh, it's starting to fall off a little bit. It's not staying too interesting. I mean, that's kind of what you get with the weeded bourbon, though, sometimes. Um, the lower proof ones, they're made for easy sipping. So this one is definitely getting easier as I sip it. Um, how do you whiskey? He says, I just poured some special reserve weller and that. Wow, it's almost bland compared to everything else I've been drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen, how do you whiskey? All right, so on this one, the nose is pretty similar. Let me get some water here. I said water. Everybody drink. <clears throat> Joseph Brazers says lots of distillers turn water into bourbon. Yes, they do. <laughs> All right, let me go to the Weller Special Reserve here, and let's do a quick comparison. Mm. There is a difference. Well, I just had some water here. Let me, I said water again, drink. Let me, um, I just had some water, so let me take a quick swig here. Interesting. So while the kosher bourbon to me was more on the fruity side, the Weller Special Reserve is coming through more straightforward caramel vanilla sweetness 
I feel like the kosher might have a little extra layer of fruitiness to it. And that could be because of the higher proof there. I'm not sure. There could be a lot of factors that go into it. Obviously, you know, you have the oak where it aged. It did age for about eight years. I heard mixed um, mixed aging years. At, at first, I thought this was seven, but then I read eight. Uh, so somewhere between seven and eight years old on this one. This one's also a little bit more honey, like sweet honey on it. Mike Orev says, happy birthday, Jason. Have you tried Bardstown Prisoner yet? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I did like it, but I felt like that one has a lot of that, that, uh, that red wine cask influence. Um, instead of like, like the Chateau Le Baud, which, yeah, it had that influence, but I could taste the bourbon more. I had a fresh pour. I'm, I'm wondering if it opens up, if it gets a little bit better, if the, the red wine influence gets a little bit more muted. Um, they usually do. Uh, but I did like it at first. I probably wouldn't pay the 130 for that one, though, unfortunately. Just like the red wine cask finishes don't normally do it for me. Now, you talk Armagnac, Cognac, um, uh, even, even a rum. I think I would probably go in that direction over just straight up red wine. Uh, even sherry, I would like over that. I am going to be getting the um, the Bartstown. Uh, the they worked with uh, Copper and Kings on a brandy on I'm sorry a sherry cask finish. So I'm going to be reviewing that one soon. I'm very psyched to get that one. Yeah, Tim Evans just said yeah I'm going to be getting that one soon. I heard it's like a complete sherry bomb, so I'm excited to try that one. But again, that's really if you like sherry. You know, if you don't like sherry, you're probably not going to like that bourbon. Uh, for me, though, the Chateau Le Baud, the Armagnac one that I reviewed that I had such high praise for, that one, I think, could universally be loved. You know, unless there's, you know, a lot of you out there that don't want anything to do with finished bourbons because you feel like it's not a bourbon anymore. And I get that to some point, but good whiskey is good whiskey. Yes, uh, yeah, so the new Copper and Kings is out. It's 12-year-old MGP, finishing sherry. It's supposed to be an absolute flavor bomb. Let me go back to the kosher wheat. There's not a huge difference here. Um... I do think the kosher wheat with that slightly higher proof has a little bit more of a, of a fruit burst to it rather than the Weller Special Reserve, which is a little bit more caramel, vanilla, very, very, very slight fruit. But the more you sip that one, the more it goes away. I'm finding that in the wheat version as well. But I'm telling you, that extra four points of proof, I think, does make a little bit of a difference. I'm just finding this one a bit more flavorful than the Special Reserve. So if... If that has anything going for it, or if that is important to you, then, you know, for 40 bucks for this, it's actually a pretty solid, you know, weeded bourbon. I am not mad at that. Um, I wouldn't go crazy or be paying secondary for this at all. But if you happen to come across this for 40 bucks, I think it's a good buy. It's, it's a very good solid weeded bourbon. There's not a lot of high aged weeded bourbons out there. Most of them are on the younger side. So seven, eight year old weeded bourbon from Buffalo Trace for 40 bucks if you could find this, is actually not a bad uh, deal. Plus, I do think it has a little bit extra flavor over the regular Special Reserve. Um, John Gresham, you need to blind battle the Jim Beam's Distiller's mas Masterpiece against another Sherry finish. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the Masterpiece. Um, I've never even seen one. Well, I think I've seen one at a bar, but never in a store. I don't know how long ago that thing was released, but yeah, I've never even seen one. I know I Whiskey She Wines uh, reviewed one. I got to ask if maybe I could get a sample from them. Maybe do like a sherry, sherry finished uh, blind matchup at some point. All right, so we did the weeded ones. Now we're going to get into the rye recipe. Let me put that here. Uh, so let me... Yeah, I really think the, the, the weeded kosher one has just like this extra berry note. 
that I'm not getting on the special reserve. I mean, that's me, but I think when you compare them, you can really tell. Um, all right, let's go here. So now we're going to compare the raw recipe to regular Buffalo Trace, which will be here. So let's pour some Buffalo Trace out. Wait, let me clear this a little bit. Uh, Dav Miesel says, happy birthday, Jason. Where can I get one of those awesome shirts you're wearing? Also interested to hear your thoughts on which whiskey pairs well with coffee. Which whiskey pairs well with coffee? That's a really good question, Dav. Um, uh, what have I had with coffee? So, I've had a couple of whiskeys in my coffee that are actually are pretty good. So, I think, I know this is kind of a known thing, but Irish whiskey goes great in coffee. I think the, the lighter notes definitely goes great with coffee. Uh, for a bourbon, though, I actually really like um, Woodford Double Oaked with coffee. You ever pour that in a little coffee? It's like just, you have coffee and like breakfast in a glass. That's really good with coffee. Um, also enjoy, what are some of the other ones? Um, I don't think what else I've had with coffee. Uh, let me see. Oh, um, no, it wasn't that one. Where the hell? Oh, uh, rye. I think some really good rye whiskeys go good with coffee too, actually. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, bourbon cream in the coffee works great. Uh, uh, what was the... What was that one I had not too long ago in coffee that was actually surprised me how good that was? Oh, Old Forester 1910. Old Forester 1910. A little bit of that in coffee, it's perfect. I'm telling you. Something about that stuff. It actually goes really well in coffee. Tim Evans with a 499 Super Chat. Thank you so much, man. David Hatton says, Slain was great in coffee. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Screwball is actually not bad if you like peanut butter whiskey. <laughs> but when you're talking bourbons, you know, you kind of want something that kind of goes with the, because bourbon can overtake the coffee flavor, but something that's a little bit lower proof works really well, like the Old Forester 1910, um, and like the Woodford uh, Double Oaked, as I mentioned. Actually really good, a little drop in your coffee. You should, guys should try that tomorrow morning and let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree with me. Shoot, shoot me an email, guys. Let me know if you did the old... Uh, Woodford Reserve, Double Oaked, or uh, 1910 in coffee. 1910 is Double Oak on steroids. <laughs> uh, Jason, what do you think of the Sam Houston 14-year? Um, I got a sample of that, and I actually really liked it. I didn't think it was too bad. I didn't think it was amazing, um, but I thought it was a really solid bourbon. Again, you're looking at that 200 to 250 price point, which isn't bad for a 14-year-old whiskey. Um, the problem is, though, you have, like, Knob Creek putting out 15-year-old uh, for 100 bucks, um, But that's what you're going to pay for some of these, you know, younger distilleries or craft distilleries that are sourcing and just bottling their own stuff. Uh, for my money, though, I would probably rather buy an Old Carter or even a Fourgate or even a Bardstown Bourbon Company, uh, one of the older 12-year MGP special releases they do over the Sam Houston. Uh even Joseph Magnus, I would take probably over that because that has some older juice in it. There's a lot of stuff I'd probably take over the Sam Houston, but I thought it was very solid bourbon, very good. Just nothing unique enough for me to spend that type of money on it. Uh, Terrence Scott says, Buffalo Trace works with great with my pork ribs. Oh, yes. So I recently got a smoker uh, not too long ago. And I'm telling you, I made this rack of ribs. Um, so I put the ribs down, I laid down some dry rub on it, uh, put it in tin foil, let it smoke in there for a good amount of time. Then once that was done, once it went through like its first few hours, um, basted it, uh, I dropped some bourbon. Uh, I actually used Eagle Rare. I dropped some Eagle Rare on the tin foil in there and close it back up, put it back on the smoker, let it steam, get that flavor. Then I added some, uh, some barbecue sauce, uh, which also had bourbon in it. And then dropped a little bit more uh, Eagle Rare in there to, to let it evaporate into the ribs. Those things, not only did they fall apart, but you definitely got a good... I'm not going to say it had this overly, uh, overly like delicious bourbon note in the ribs, but you could definitely taste a little bit of sweetness in there. It was, it was delicious. It was really awesome. 
Um, David Hatton says, hot buttery rolls, the dew is great in coffee. As in, like, Mountain Dew? <laughs> I have a 1990 Sam Houston, and it's so good. Oh, well, that's awesome, man. Trevor Wilson says, time to pour some Wall Turkey 17, you know, for your birthday celebration. That's right, Trev. I'm so happy Trev found that bottle. Trev, have you even tried that yet? What do you think of it? Is this your first pour of it? I have a feeling you've had it already. What do you think? <laughs> All right, so this is the rye recipe. So let's go into the nose and the rye and try this one here. Try to get this to open up a little bit. Oh, Tullamore Dew. Yes, Tullamore Dew. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Tullamore Dew. They bottle their stuff at way too low a proof for me at this point. But I could see why that would be good in coffee. You could definitely smell the rye in here when compare it to the uh, to the wheat. Where's that wheater? Yeah, the noses are totally different. The um, the rye recipe definitely has more citrus going on. It's that typical, uh, that really, really sweet vanilla uh, note, the vanilla cake that you get from Buffalo Trace. There is some more citrus in here, though, which I like. I'm getting like a, like a caramel chocolate note, which is kind of cool. I don't think I've ever gotten that in Buffalo Trace. Let me go to the Buffalo Trace here and see what we get. Wow, the Buffalo Trace is actually a little bit lighter. Again, very sweet. Man, when you compare the noses, the kosher, again, the kosher one is coming across a little bit more bolder on the, uh, on the nose. A little bit more flavor is jumping out of the glass here. Again, this is very sweet. Caramel, vanilla, your usual bourbon notes here. Uh, that quintessential Buffalo Trace sweetness. Toasted pecans, a hint of cinnamon, but this is coming through with, again, it's giving you these flavors, but there's like a little bit of an extra layer of something, and I think it's the citrus note that I'm getting. A little bit of an orange peel, and I like a slight chocolate note too, which is crazy. Man. All right, let's try the kosher rye. Here we go. Ooh. That has some nice balance to it. Very sweet up front. A little bit of oak spice. More cinnamon on the back end on this one. Cinnamon nutmeg. Some good baking spices here. That came off way more flavorful than I thought it was going to. Let me try another sip of that one. All right, second sip wasn't as good as the first sip. <laughs> um, yeah, good balance. I mean, it's very sweet. It's got the oaky profile to it. But that, again, that Buffalo Trace sweetness just explodes on the front of the palate. You get mid-palate, you get the citrus note. I'm not getting the chocolate that I was getting on the nose on the palate at all. This is more candy sweetness that you get you're used to from Buffalo Trace. Thank you, Jeff Bales. I appreciate that. Mm. That's more balanced, I think, than the, than the Buffalo Trace. I think Buffalo Trace, and why so many people love it, is because it is very sweet. Um, let me go for a sip of this now. Hmm. So very similar. But again... This is like the wheat was doing with the fruit note. This is coming in with a little bit more of a citrus spike on the back end that I'm not getting in regular Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace is coming through with that great sweetness, good balance, really good flavors. Buffalo Trace is an absolute, you know, it's a stalwart bourbon if you can get it. 
for the 26 27 bucks that it is. Go for another sip of it. Yeah, after the second sip, that all the sweet flavors that were there just kind of stay. The, the balance of it kind of goes away a little bit, becomes that really beautiful, easy sipper that everybody loves. Go back to the kosher. God, the kosher one actually might drink even smoother than this one, which is weird. It is, but I think this has a little bit more of a balance of flavors than the Buffalo Trace. But they're very similar. It's not a huge difference. Um, I would say if you can get this in your area, you're not going to go wrong uh, picking up a regular Buffalo Trace. You know, right now in Ohio, I can't walk into a store and buy this. When this comes in, it just goes. Um, yeah. I don't think this is a $20 difference uh, from this to this. Well, maybe like $13, $14 difference. I don't know if there's that much of a difference here uh, between those two. I do think the weeded bourbon, though, there's a good difference there. I think with the weeded uh, profile, if this is about $26, $27, bucks and you can get the weeded bourbon, the kosher one, for $40, I think there's enough of a fruit difference there to warrant maybe spending the money on it. But with this one, I think they're very close. There's not much of a huge difference there. It's like very, very minute. I'm only getting a little bit more citrus out of it. But as you keep sipping it, it gets very muted, just like regular Buffalo Trace. So, um, yeah, both are solid. Both are uh, good bourbons. Um, I think Buffalo Trace, the marketing machine, they are. They have opened up the door to another... Uh, another consumer base. Now you're looking at the uh, Jewish and uh, you know uh, you know kosher type of customers that want to drink whiskey. Maybe have been scared to, but now they have a go-to if they want. Um, so it'd be very interesting to see how this does down the line. Again, this is a one-time, one-time annual release that's going to happen right after Passover every year. So. You know, if anyone's out there that's like buying these and trying to flip them, you know, let leave these alone maybe and try to let the the kosher the kosher uh, customer base maybe get their hands on these so they can enjoy it a little bit. But yeah, solid whiskeys. Um, Douglas Papa, one of my legendary drummers. Happy birthday, Jason! Best wishes. Cheers to you, Douglas. I appreciate that. Halden Kirkwood says just got one of sixty five today. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, given how rarely the single barrels pop up in my state. Uh, Mark Reyes says, weird that in New Jersey, Buffalo Trace is easy to find. Yeah, I mean, whenever I visit New York, I mean, this is everywhere. I can get, I could walk in most places and get this. Hey, Cletus is in the house. What's up? Happy birthday, Jason. Love the content and happy to be a patron to learn more from your reviews. Appreciate all you do for the community. Thank you so much, Cletus. Thanks for becoming a Patreon. Gave you a shout out earlier. Awesome. Rebecca Page says, since it's your birthday tomorrow, are we going to get a new snippet of you falling out of your chair again? <laughs> I won't give you a new one, but uh, I, I could show you, you know, the original one if you want. Let's see. Do I have that here? Uh, here we go. Ah, uh, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that never gets old. Just fall on my ass. Why not? Um, I do want to mention, though, guys, July 29th. So July 29th is going to be an epic show because it's a Wednesday night. It's my usual time slot that I go live. But it's actually going to be the exact day of my two-year anniversary for the Mash and Drum uh, whiskey, whiskey Room and uh, Whiskey Review channel on YouTube. So I'm planning on maybe having some guests on, planning on, um, uh, I think I said I was going to be working on some, some like bloopers, some old clips. We're going to look back at my first review I ever did. Uh, gonna be, I'm going to be playing some clips of myself, playing some drums for you guys, because I don't think I've been able to do that for you quite yet. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be an epic show, so definitely mark that down. Uh, July 29th, it's going to be a really fun show that night. Um, so yeah. Definitely mark that on your calendar. That's going to be an epic night. So, 
Uh, let's see here. Bourbon Buddy says, speaking of distilleries in Frankfurt, I'm having a second pour of some Pinhook Bohemian. I'm excited for what Castle and Key has in store. Young product, but has tons of potential. Solid stuff. Yeah. Uh, so Castle and Key should be coming out with their first bourbon. I believe it's 2022. I think. I think they put their, I think at that point their bottle and bond will be ready. Um, I think that'll be four years, I believe. I think they're putting out a four-year bourbon. Uh, that's going to be, that's going to be craziness. I think when that bourbon comes out, people are going to go ape shit to get that, to get their hands on that bourbon. Uh, cheers, Captain, make it happen. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, thanks, Brian. Thanks for coming in. Fellow Buckeye. Cheers, Brian. Thanks for coming in. Tim Evans says, reselling bourbon takes too much effort. Drink it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. So again, as a quick recap, guys, um, the wheat recipe, I really do find a difference between this and the Weller Special Reserve. I think this has a slight bit more of a fruit note to it, at least in my bottle, that it's just a little bit a step above uh, Weller Special Reserve. The rye recipe, on the other hand, it's pretty damn close to regular Buffalo Tray. So if you can't find this one, you're not really missing out on too much. I don't think this is a $13, $14 difference in price point than this. Um, this, on the other hand, the weeded one, I do think there is a, a good difference there that might warrant you, if you're a fan of weeded bourbon, that you might want to pull the trigger on that one if you find it at retail. I don't think, though, it's worth anywhere above retail, though. I think 40 bucks is a great price for it. If you could find it for 40 and you like weeded bourbon, pick it up. Let me keep these here. All right, guys. So now what I want to do is uh, do a giveaway. So it's going to be a little bit more tricky tonight because now you have two boxes to choose from if you don't want to try uh, one of the samples I'm going to, the sample packs I'm going to send. So you have two boxes to choose from. So the samples on deck tonight for you guys, uh, because it's my birthday, if, uh, well, it's my birthday tomorrow. If none of you have tried it yet, I'm going to do a sample of Old Forester Birthday Bourbon uh, from 2018. This is the 12-year. This is the 12-year Beast, which is one of my favorites. It's getting low, but I'm willing to share it a little bit uh, with uh, one of you guys tonight. So you'll be able to get a win a sample of that or go with either what's in the boxes here. So, so we're going to play Guess the Bottle. For those of you who haven't played it yet, I'm going to show you a silhouette of a, of a whiskey bottle. And the first one in the chat to guess exactly what bottle that is will have a chance to play Let's Make a Whiskey Deal. That's right. Let's Make a Whiskey Deal. It's coming at you. Here we go, folks. Everyone get ready. Trev Wilson says, holy moly. Okay. Here we go. Uh, actually, you know what, if, uh, I'll actually also, we'll talk about it. Let's see who gets the first bottle first. All right, here we go. Get your, uh, get your thing ready. Get your typers ready. The only clue I'm going to say is that this is, oh man, I'm trying to remember what bottles I picked. Oh crap. <laughs> what bottle did I pick for this? Um... I got to check something, guys, because I want to make sure that whoever gets it right gets it right. And I can't, I remember the second bottle, but what was the first? Oh, okay, I remember it now. All right, I got it. All right, we're ready. We're ready. All right, so first one to get the bottle silhouette to name it in the chat wins. And here we go. Name that bottle. Name that bottle. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Here we go. All on, okay, yeah, no clues. Nope, 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 nope. I don't see it yet. Oh, Peter White says I'm 30 seconds behind. Sorry, man. Nope. Man, nobody's got it yet. Holy crap, these are coming in fast. Holy shit.
Oh, wait, I think someone got it. Um, let me make sure that that was the first one. Yup. Patches. Somebody in the chat named Patches, who I don't think I've seen before. It is Wild Turkey Long Branch. You nailed it, Patches. Good job. So Patches comes through naming the Wild Turkey Long Branch as the bottle. So let's head back here. Congrats to Patches. Um, man, a lot of people were saying uh, jo Joseph Magnus. Um, man. Yeah, Rossville Union came up. Joseph Magnus was like the number one um, uh, bottle that people were getting, which I don't know if it really looks that close to it, but I guess maybe it did. La Formula Bourbon says, no, I said it first. Let me go back up. You had Long Branch, yes, but Long Branch. I do see you saying Long Branch. Let me go past Patches here. All right. Um, wait, 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 holy crap, where'd that go? Patches, Long Branch. Uh, nope, Patches on my chat said it first, and I just went through the whole chat. You were close, though. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, La Formula, Bourbon. Yeah, you were close. But, yeah, Patches had it first. So, congrats to Patches. Um, is he in the chat? Come back out, Patches. Because you need to pick. Do you want a sample of uh, Old Forester Birthday Bourbon 12-year? Or do you want to pick... Box one or box two? So go for it. I'm waiting for you, Patches. Patches says, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, Patches, what are you going to go with? Do you want the 12 or do you want box one or box two? Up to you. Don't worry, La Formula Bourbon. I'm doing another uh, giveaway a little bit later. So you'll have a shot. What do we got here? He wants the sample all day. Okay, he's going to get the sample. So, Patches, you can email me here at themastandrum at gmail.com. I will get your sample out. And um, just because I'm a nice guy, I'm going to throw in a sample of um, uh, this Old Forester single barrel pick that I think is delicious. So you're going to get two Old Foresters. Uh, for your for your guests. So you're going to get the uh, single barrel pick, which is 90 proof, and the Old Forester birthday bourbon to enjoy. So cheers to you, Patches. Yes, it is fine stuff. I do love that stuff. Yum. All right, guys. So it's 10 o'clock. I have some epic birthday pours lined up here. Um, now, I was wondering if you guys wanted me to let me know in the chat. Um, I was doing a couple. Of, I was doing, you know, we did a bunch of head-to-head -head, uh, bourbon uh, matchups last week. Uh, was there any head-to-head you guys wanted me to do this week that I can maybe set up real fast for you? Um, there are some good stuff in the mix here. Old Forest of President's Choice. Um, George T. Stagg, I got some William LaRue Weller here, um, like if you guys could pick like an ultimate showdown, what would you want to see go head to head? Cause I have, you know, I got the Turkey 17, Booker's 30th, you know, let's, let's get an epic blind tasting here set up. What do you guys want me to do here as a blind tasting? You know, these were kind of low proof. I'm still, my palate's pretty good right now. So what do you guys think? Oh, actually, yes, that's what I want to do. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, we could think about that. There, there's a bottle here that I have that I haven't opened yet, and I've been saving it for a special occasion. I figured I'd open it on my two-year anniversary show, but um, it's, uh, it's, let's see, box one versus box two. <laughs> Uh, Stag versus William Weller. Wow. 
E.H. Taylor Bowel Proof. Booker's 30th versus Stag. Uh, William Heaven Hill. Taylor versus Stag. Booker's 30th versus GTS. Uh, yeah, that might be pretty good. William Lou Weller and GTS against two Dusties you have. Hmm, that's an interesting one. Uh, hey, Tyler Denholm came in. Cheers, man. Thanks for coming into the show. Uh, Presidents versus Booker's 30th. Uh, Tim Gard, O4, Surprez versus Joseph Magnus. Uh, Jason Lamp came in with a $1.99 super chat. Thank you so much, man. Stag versus Stag. Oh, Junior. Um, I think I've already done that one, though. And the, the Stag Junior 18 came out on top over Stag Junior Bash 12. Uh, what don't you have that you want? What don't I have? Oh, God. I am dying to get an old Carter Batch 5. I would love that bottle. Um, hey, Keith Schmidt with a 20, uh, 1999 Super Chat. $20 towards your 2020 Old Forrester birthday bottle. Happy birthday, Jason. Old Forrester President versus Turkey 17. That's a good one. Uh, Masters Keep Showdown. That would be pretty good. Unfortunately... Masters Keep 17 is the only one I have left. I drank all the rest of them. Uh, I would love to put that 17 against the original 17 that, that came in. But, no, the Old Carter uh, Batch 5 uh, Bourbon is one that I've been on the hunt for. I would love to own anything from the, uh, you know, the Old Rip or the Van Winkle or, you know, the Pappy lineup, but... You know, everyone always asks me, you know, do you like Pappy? How many bottles do you have? I don't own any Pappy. It's like, sorry, guys. I just, I've never gotten a chance to own any of that stuff. Any, I've been in about 100 different raffles. My name has never come up. I never do good on those for whatever reason. Um, I've gotten samples, though, and I've gotten to taste the stuff. So I am definitely grateful for that. Booker's Rye was, I got two samples of that. And that was one of the most epic whiskeys I ever tried. But tonight, I want to open this with you guys because it's one of those whiskeys that I've been kind of waiting to open for an occasion. Figured, why not tonight? So we're going to crack this open here. Ooh. So this is the Michter's Fort Nelson Reserve Barrel Strength Rye Whiskey. Now, I had the pleasure of bottling this one uh, by hand with uh, Scott from My Bourbon Journey and Dusty Dan. Um... So it's a beautiful bottle, and there it is. Oh, my God. It's so dark, too. Uh, how do you whiskey? says, blend straight from the barrel against another barrel-proof EHT, B30th, or Stag. Oh, that's a good one. Everyone, I mean, you guys are just throwing in the, uh, the things here. Wow, what the heck is that? So this is Michter's barrel-proof rye that we were able to bottle at the distillery right out of the barrel. Um, you pay, uh, I think it's like 130 bucks. You get to fill your own bottle. You get to label it, uh, name it, um, put all the stickers on it. It's a great experience. So I bottled this on May 30th of 2019, last year. So you can kind of see like my signature there and the date. Um, I haven't opened this yet. Dusty Dan opened his, and he's been, like, telling me for the last couple weeks, you gotta open it. You gotta open it. It's ridiculous. So, I'm opening it. What the hell? And you know what? This is gonna be the next sample giveaway when I do my next giveaway. So, um, here we go here. Let me open this kind of neatly here. Um, so, just for, just so you guys know, um, this is... 115.2 proof, which at the time, I don't know if there's been a higher proof than this one, it was their highest barrel strength rye that they ever got, and we got to, that ever aged, and we got to bottle it, our own bottles, which was great, um, so I'm, I mean, look at the, the, the juice in here, look how dark it is, I mean, it's like coffee, it is crazy dark. Um, let's pop this open here. Oh, now that was in America. If you ever heard one, um, I got another glass here. Let's pour this in here. I cannot wait to try this stuff. So Michter's Battle Proof Rise, one of my favorite rise. It's probably the, one of my top two favorite rise in the world. I just love it. 
Uh, but having this and bottling it by hand, 115 proof, oh my god. So remember, Michter's has the lowest entry proof in the business coming in at only 104. They go in the barrel at 104 proof, which is substantially low. Um, you know, when you compare that to Heaven Hill, Buffalo Trace, both going in at 125. Um, I mean, Buffalo Trace goes in with their weeded bourbon at 114. But, I mean, look at, I mean, so this is out of the bottle, guys. Look how dark it is. I mean, that is crazy. For rye whiskey, <laughs> Gary Franchley said, that's Spinal Tap album black. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Karen B. Ford, I have one of those. Haven't opened it yet. Special occasion. My grandson is due on my father. What? OG Bricks, sorry, sorry I got here late. How is the BT kosher? Uh, I'm a fan of the weeded kosher one. I think that's worth it. The rye recipe, not so much. That's pretty much, uh, you know, the, the gist of it. Yeah, I'm going to let this sit here a little bit. OG Brick 420, nice to see you, man. B. Berglund says, no more super chats for you. <laughs> Hot buttery rolls as sexual chocolate. Exactly, man, right? How do you whiskey? Put it up against the baby Yoda. Oh, that's upstairs. Yeah, my bourbon journey. Cracked it open. I did. So Scott from my bourbon journey, he has a bottle of this too that uh, he filled. He hasn't cracked it open yet. I figured I'd do it. <coughs> All right, I'm letting this get some air in it. Let's give it a try, guys. Oh, my God. Ugh. This is chocolate, toffee, like, oh, man. There is a coffee note on here, I think. Maybe my mind's playing with me because it looks like coffee. I'm thinking coffee. <laughs> God, this is dark and rich. This is molasses, chocolate. Definitely get some rye spice in there. This is like if you took a bushel of mint and just hand dipped it in chocolate. That's what it smells like. Oh my God. Tons of vanilla and caramel sweetness. Remember, this is a Kentucky rye. This is a lower rye mash bill, so it's going to have a lot of sweetness to it. It's not going to be super spicy. Tammy Brennigan says, I want a sample of that. <laughs> Zach Rodriguez, Balcones uh, Froke. Now that's dark. Yeah, that is dark. I have a bottle of that up there. I love that stuff. All right, I'm going for a taste of this, guys. Cheers, and thank you for all the support and for the birthday wishes tonight. It was awesome. Wow. You talk about a chocolate molasses, like a roasted rye. It's almost like a roasted type of rye um, flavor that I'm getting. Still a hint of spearmint, a little bit of pepper, tons and tons of like rich, rich vanilla spice here. Oh, my God. I don't know about the best rise, but that's easily one of the best Michter. That's probably the best Michter's Barrel Proof Rye I've ever had, hands down. That thing is so rich and complex and so much flavor in it. Good burn to it. Oh, dude. Scott, from my bourbon journey, you are going to freaking... You're going to go ape shit when you crack that open. Yeah, no dill in this at all. This is not, Michter's was never known to have a dill note in it. Again, this is a lower rye uh, mash bill. You're not going to get those like dill or pickle notes in this. This is very sweet, but also very rich, very flavorful. Damn. Ah, oh, holy crap, that's good. All right. That was worth the, the opening with you guys. That was really good. My bourbon just says, I'll crack mine uh, tomorrow with you on your birthday. Yeah, that'd be awesome, Scotty. Smile good, brother. I could hear it here. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. This is really good. I am going to give away a sample of this because I think somebody out there should try this stuff. It's that 
freaking good. I'm telling you. John Belushi, when I say barely legal rye, I mean, um, so for rye to be a rye, it's kind of like the rules of bourbon. It's got to be 51% rye, and then, you know, the rest is either barley and corn or, uh, or some other combination of grains. Um, you know, when you compare that to, to a high rye bourbon, you know, a, a legit rye, like, like an MGP rye that's 95.5, that's not barely legal. That's a traditional rye spice uh, type of flavor profile. When I say barely legal rye, you're looking at like Buffalo Trace, uh, Knob Creek, um, Wild Turkey. You know, their cornerstone last year was, was delicious, but again, that's a barely legal rye. You're looking at 51, 52% rye grain in that. Woo, that is phenomenal. All right. So before we do our final giveaway, guys, and um, and we close it out here tonight, uh, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a, a, a blind matchup here. So I'm gonna do I think some of you guys wanted me to put the president's choice in there, so I think that's in the mix. So we do president's choice. Let's get. Uh, we'll do Booker's 30th too. I saw a lot of people said Booker's 30th. I have that here. Woo, Booker's 30th is beautiful. Whoop. My Booker's 30th is running a little bit low here, so uh, I don't have that much left, unfortunately. I've shared this bottle like crazy. I love it. One of the best Booker's releases ever. I'm going to put that in there. Booker's 30th. And then for my third one. What do you guys want the third one to be? You want to do stag? What do you think? Um, or, hmm. What else can we throw in there? Something epic. Masters Keep 17. Um, stag uh, 2018. Uh, what else? Um, let's see. Book of Sturdy is a beast. Yeah, it is a beast. It is a beast for sure. <laughs> William Rueller, GTS. We have two votes for William Rueller. Oh, Beagle Rare. I wish I had some more. Yeah, Bottle Kill Time. Stag Jr. Stag 18. Weller 12, no, these would these two would kill Weller 12. Absolutely kill Weller 12. Um, all right, I think we got a lot of uh, requests for the William Leroux Weller. All right, so I'll, I'll throw some Weller in here. <clears throat> all right, so this is the, <clears throat> all right, William Leroux Weller. So this is the twenty. This is the twenty nineteen bottle. So this is one hundred and twenty eight proof, even. So I'll do that. Man, this is a pretty epic blind tasting here. William Lee Weller, Booker's thirtieth, and Old Forest are President's Choice. Holy shit! Now this is a birthday blind. So this is why I like uh, talking to you guys because you guys, you know, you make it right here. Um. All right, so yeah, so Weller's on the end there. So let me set up a blind tasting here. So we have William, oh, William the Weller, and the 30th, and then President's Choice. All right, guys, happening live. William the Weller is here. Um, 30th is in the middle. And we have the President's Choice here on the end. Yeah, no losers at all in this lineup. I agree. All right, so now we're just going to mix them around. I'm not going to look. I'm going to try to just see what goes where here. Let's play the little bit of a shell game. I don't want to look what's what. All right, now I'm totally confused. I have no idea what's in anything. <laughs> all right. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's start here. 
go through it, stick around. I'm going to do one more giveaway. Uh, I'm going to give away a sample of the, um, the Michters and or if you want to choose something in the box, you can go for the box too. I have a feeling most people are going to go for the Michters. We'll see. Uh, let's start with uh, number one here. Oh, dear Lord. This is just pure candy on the nose. Cinnamon cherry. Like baked apple pie coming right out of the oven. Slight like pecan nuttiness note. Whew. Man, vanilla frosting. Man, cinnamon spice, nutmeg. Wow, that's that's an amazing nose on that one. Jesus. Let's go for a sip. Cheers, guys. Oh, dear God. That is unbelievably sweet and delicious. Um... Paps 15 and 20 can be legit. Uh, finishing off a bottle of BT here. So I want to ask you guys, for those of you in the chat that have had Pappy before, if you've had 15, 20, or 23, honestly, in your opinion, um, and this could be a yes or no answer. Well, first off, I want to ask, if, you've, if any of you have been privileged enough to try all three, what was your favorite? Was it 15, 20, or 23? If any of you have out, out there have only been able to have one, two, or three of them, I'm sorry, uh, like one of them or maybe a couple here and there, did you think it's worth the hype? I'm just curious, you know, from a chat perspective, what you guys think of it. I've had the old Rip 10, and I don't think that's worth anywhere near what the asking price is. Uh, but, you know, would I want to own one? Yeah, of course, but not for $400, $450. Like, it's on secondary. I think that's priced correct at about, you know, 80 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it's supposed to be. Um, Mark G says 20, uh, 15, 20, never had Pappy, 15 or John Pete says 23, and he's had all three. He has all three. Damn, dude. Never had it. Um, Dale Collins, what's up, man? Jeff Huck, never had any. 15 was good, but not worth the secondary. Tim Evans has had all, but he says he'd take William the Weller over all of them. That's interesting. 20 and 15 worth it. 23 is not. Your taste is amazing. Dale Collins. Thank you, man. <laughs> I tried 15 and 20. The 15 is an all-time fave. None of them are worth a secondary price. Chris Rodeo says, I have them all worth MSRP on all. 15 is my favorite. So that's the seems to be the going rate. Now... When I had the 15, I thought it was amazing, but I also had a, a very good 20, I think. I've never had such an intense vanilla extract note in a bourbon before, like I did in that Pappy 20 sample that I, re that I received, that I got to try. Um, anything beyond that, though, was um, the 15, I think, is probably the most approachable, the most balanced, but the 20 year I had... I'm not going to say it blew my mind, but the amount of vanilla that was in that bourbon, I'll never forget that dram. Um, so just because of that, I would probably want a 20. Uh, just, but just because of that experience, I'm not even saying that, you know, because they defer each year. Some of them are different depending on how they batch or how they age, obviously. But just on that alone, I would probably lean towards wanting to get the 20. But if I had a choice and I only like had a gun to my head... I would probably pick the 15 because that seems to be the most universally loved and the most balanced out of all of them. I don't know if the next 20 that I buy would have that that sick vanilla note that I had on the sample I had. Um, uh, I had Pappy 15, easy to drink, but I don't like weeded bourbon, says Cham Chianello. Okay, yeah, you know, when I did my Weller uh, video, a lot of people said that, you know, they weren't a fan of weeders. Which I found amazing because so many, you know, Weeders and Pappy is like all the rage. So, very, very interesting. I disagree. The 15 and 20 are both worth 400 and 800, says Drew Bolin. Easy. 
They're amazing. 20 is best by a long shot. All right, Drew coming in with that. Florida Living says, eat my shorts. <laughs> All right, eat your shorts. Have some bourbon with your shorts, buddy. All right, number two here. Oh. This is super sweet, too. Just cherry. This is more cherry chocolate. Cinnamon spice. Oh. There's like a barbecue smoke note I'm getting on this one, which is amazing. John Belushi, Boss Hog. No. I think Whistle Pig is one of the most overrated and overpriced brands on the market. I've just... I've never had a Whistle Pig that was like, holy shit, I have to buy it right now. Because, you know, Whistle Pig, 12 years, like 120 bucks, and that's a ride. It's 12 years old. Whistle Pig 15 is like, what, 200, 220? I got this for 130, and I take this over Whistle Pig any day of the week. So, Whistle Pig just isn't my thing. I. I know a lot of people love it. I think they have brilliant marketing, but just not my thing. Florida Living. Happy birthday from Florida. Cheers. Mark JG said, I did not like the 23. Wild Turkey Revival, 150. I love the Wild Turkey Revival. Thrasher, but you have to like sherry. The sherry influence does impart a flavor but I think they age it correctly. You still get the wild turkey notes through the sherry on the Revival. If I had a chance to buy another one, I would. That's just me, though. Howdy Whiskey, overrated. Jefferson's changed my mind. I don't have to because I think it's overrated, too. Ooh. Ooh. That number two is beautiful. Cinnamon sugar. This is like a Cinnabon in a glass. Vanilla icing, cinnamon. This is like a Cinnabon if you add a little cherry glaze on top. Ooh. Uh, do I like that better than A? Because A was ridiculous. No, I don't know if I like that better than A. A is pretty damn amazing. <laughs> All right, let's go to C here. Oh. <clears throat> so C is... Oh, C is chocolate and cayenne pepper. Definitely some nuttiness in there. Oh, raspberry. Is ADHD whiskey in the chat? Should I say um, blueberries, maybe? Austin Scott says, I enjoy Jefferson's Ocean Cask. I have two different voyages. Um, I have one Jefferson's Ocean Cask strength that I bought that I really, really enjoy. I think the beauty of the Jefferson's Ocean Cask strength is that if it does impart a salty note to it, you know, from being out in the ocean during the voyage, whatever it may be, I think that's when they're special because to get like that salted caramel type note in a bourbon is really delicious. The issue is not all of them have that note. So I always, that's the ocean, the Jefferson's ocean cast strength ones are always a try before I buy. I like to try to try that specific voyage before I drop 90 to a hundred dollars on it. Uh, let's see here. Nate, uh, oh, Silverlock Whiskey Club. Is there a bourbon which has exactly the same amount of wheat and rye in the mash bill? Um, I don't think so. I think usually, usually the wheat is the, well, I mean, they're, they're pretty close usually. You usually get, um, wait, wheat and rye. You have to look at a four grain bourbon, buddy. Uh, the four grains usually... Usually a weeded mash bill has no rye in it. Uh, the four grain bourbons, though, that will have different types of, uh, that will have both rye and wheat in the mash bill, you know, sometimes get close. I would have to look. I would check in Woodford Reserve's uh, four grain, the one that they did, the weeded whiskey. That has, that's a four grain. Um, I mean, the Colonel Taylor four grain is probably the best four grain I've ever had. 
but unfortunately that's impossible to get and way over market value. Uh, uh, Koval makes a four grain. That's that's really good. I don't know how the I'm not sure what the the proportions are of the grains in that one though. Eric Evans says, hey, buddy, just got home from work. Can't wait to see the beginning of the rewatch. Oh, cheers, Eric. Thanks for coming in. Um, which voyage is the best with the cast rank Jefferson's? Uh, I don't remember offhand the one I have. Uh, Eric, I'll get back to you on Discord to see and let you know which one I have. That one, the one I have, I really like. It has that salted caramel note. I like to see the barbecue bourbon show, Mark Reyes. Yeah, I can maybe do that. Let's go for a sip of the last one here. Oh, Jesus. How am I supposed to pick from these three? All three of them are amazing. So just based on palette alone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess here. And I'm going to guess on what's what. Just because I, you know, I like to do that. And I think you guys like to see me, you know, maybe do a challenge here. I'm guessing that's the Booker's because it's super peanutty. It's fruity. It's delicious. I think that's the old Forrester. And I think that's William the Rueller. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> um, now, trying to get that out of my head, I have to rank them which one I like best. That's ridiculous. Oh, God, that's good. This one, the President's Choice. Which I think that's what it is. Still very good. Yeah, that's got to be the old Forrester because it has like a little, it has a slight banana note in there, which is really good. Then the Booker's 30th, which I think that's what this is. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go this way. This one, first, second, third. Not to say any of these are bad. They're all amazing. Let's find out what third place is. I guess this was the old Forrester. Yep. President's Choice. <laughs> Number three. I'm sorry, I got that banana note. I thought old Forrester. It's going to happen. Number two, I thought this was the Booker's because it had that nuttiness that's just pure Jim Beam. It's the 30th. Number one, William Leroux Weller, 2018. I'm sorry, William Leroux Weller, as much as people hate chasing it and paying secondary for it, I think it's worth every penny. It's that good. Every year I've had has just been unfreaking real. The sweetness, the balance, the age on it. It's incredible stuff. But that book is 30th was an unbelievable release. And this President's Choice that I finally was able to get, thanks to How Do You Whiskey, um, easily one of the top Old Forester products I've ever had. Uh, you can't go wrong with any three of these. Uh... The Booker's 30th, unfortunately, was uh, last year's release, so it's pretty much gone. But if you ever have a chance to try it at a bar, all three of these are worth trying if you're a whiskey enthusiast. Just great stuff. Tim Evans says, it's the shit. It is the shit. Hooray for the Wellers. Yeah. But I'm telling you, both of these were not too far behind. That old Forest of President's Choice, as I've had a few pours of it and it's opened up, it's gotten better. Um, all right, let's do our final giveaway for a shot to win a sample of the Michter's Barrel Proof. There's going to be another Guess the Bottle coming up. Get your typers ready. Uh, we're going to finish out the night here. Uh, what I'm going to do is do the giveaway, and then you're going to see me chug a little bit of Jep the Creed <laughs> before we sign off to finish off the night to cap off uh, this amazing night as we lead into... Uh, tomorrow, which is my birthday, and I want to thank everyone for the for the wishes and for the support and everything else. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys are the best. Austin Scott says, I just won't pay secondary on principle. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, Ma Boy says, Booker's 30th MSRP was $199. Yes, and I I think it's worth every penny, the Booker's 30th, for $200. Um, just because there is some very old whiskey in there. The box, you have to include, yeah, a lot of people say you don't drink the box, but those were made from the old, you know, wood planks that, you know, Booker No himself stood on. 
And I think there's some historic, you know, context to that that I think makes that releasing that bottle a little bit special. Uh, when I finish that bottle, I'm keeping that box and the bottle just for historic purposes. Um, Old Forrester birthday bourbon. Old Forrester what? Oh, Michter's bullet. Oh man, Jeff the Y. <laughs> I'm just going to chug some to finish out the night. Because we've had so many good epic pours here. I'm going to drink all three of these the rest of the night as we move into my birthday. So get your fingers ready. Here comes the next, uh, the next guest to bottle. And let's make a whiskey deal. Want to make sure I got the second one up here. Okay, here we go. I know people are guessing already. All right, here we go. Here comes the next one. And go. This one might be a little tough. I'm curious how fast you guys will get this one. Let's see. Nope, it's not Weller. It's not Four Roses. Nope, it's not Old Forester. I knew a lot of people would say Old Forester. Nope, nope. Oh, shit. I see it. Todd D. Nailed it. It is Bell Mead. That is one of my favorite bourbons in the world that not enough people talk about. Bell Mead Cast Strength Reserve Bourbon. Yes. Congratulations, Todd D. You win the Christmas goose. <laughs> Todd D. Congratulations, buddy. You, you nailed it. He gets the Bell Mead. Hot buttery rolls, you were this close. <laughs> Hot buttery rolls was one person behind. So close, man. Oh, Shannon Craig said cream of Kentucky. That was a good guess. Oh, President's Choice was in there. Another good guess. Yep. Wow, wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah, Robot Scott, that stuff's amazing. I said it before, Todd. <laughs> Hot buttery rolls, not on my chat. On my, I have to go by my chat. Um... Where's Todd here? Oh my God, you guys were freaking getting in the, the guesses here. Yeah, Todd D. I'm looking for you hot buttery rolls to see if you said it before him. Um, nope. I have Todd D and then hot buttery rolls right after, uh, right after Todd. Oh wait, Bell Mead. No, I have, yeah, Todd D, Hot Buttery Rolls. Yeah, Hot Buttery Rolls, you were close. But, yeah, Todd D got it first as Bell Mead on my chat. I have to go by that. But Hot Buttery Rolls, connect with me, man. I could send you a sample of that if you want a sample swap. I know you got some good stuff, too. So, no worries. If you want to try that, if you want to try that Michter's, just shoot me an email, man. All right, Todd D, you got it. Um, so Todd D, so I'm going to give you a choice, Todd D, because, so you're going to get a sample of the Michters and you get to choose box A or box B. So what's ever in those boxes, you're going to get with this because I'm feeling generous. So Todd D, what do you got? Paul M says seven before Todd. Wait, what? All right, let me go back here. You guys are killing me. <laughs> this is my screen is a liar. Um, let me go back here. Yeah, people were already guessing before here. Now, guys, remember, I have to go by my chat, what I see. The chats are definitely different from computer to computer. I don't know why that happens. Um, old Forrester, Jack Daniels, Bell, the first Bell Mead that came up on my screen was from Todd D. That's what I'm saying. Paul M., you were one, two, three, four, five, past, uh, past Todd D for me. And then Hot Buttery Rolls was right after you. So I have to go by Todd D in my chat. So 
Todd D says box B, please. All right, so A and then B. So he wants this one to go along with this. And Todd D, you made a very, very good uh, choice because you... Let me get down in here. Oh, camera's blurring out. You are winning my last whiskey barrel wood flask. Here we go. That is yours, Todd D. You're going to get this and a sample of my Michter's uh, barrel proof sample. Hope you enjoy it, Todd. Todd, email me here. Uh, shoot me an email at themastingdrum at gmail.com uh, so I can get your information and send these out to you. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for playing, and I'm glad you got it right. Hot buttery rolls, you know, reach out to me. I'll get you a sample, man. Uh, but yeah, so this is the last one I'll be giving away. Uh, I have more of these being made that are going to be available to my Patreons uh, first and foremost. So, uh, so if you're a patron of the channel, you guys will be able to uh, purchase these very, very soon. So keep an eye out for this. But Todd D, you're going to get this along with your sample. So congratulations. And thanks for hanging out tonight. Thanks for the support. And with that, we're, we're going to call out a show, guys. Uh, Tammy Brennecke says, happy birthday, you old Italian fart. Mwah, Tammy, I love you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, that was the, is that the Weller? Yeah, that's good stuff. You're the man, Jason. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to the Michters. Yeah, I think you'll really, um, what's in the other box? You want to see what you passed up? So what you passed up was a sample of my Weller foolproof pick, the Kraken. So that was in the other box. So you could have gotten two samples, but instead you got a sample and a whiskey flask. So I don't know, pretty even swap. This is my last bottle of my uh, of my my Weller foolproof pick. Unfortunately, it's a delicious pick, uh, but that was in the other box. So whoever picked what would have had an epic, you know, an epic choice regardless. I figured it's the eve before my birthday. I wanted to make everybody a winner and make everyone get something amazing tonight. So cheers. Thank you all for hanging out tonight. Thank you so much for the super chats, for the support. Again, Mark, July 29th down. It's going to be the two-year uh, anniversary episode. We're going to have some guests on. I'm going to be doing some, I think we're going to try to do some epic, one epic big giveaway for one of you guys out there. Um, keep an eye on my latest videos. We have a Colonel Taylor straight. We have the Colonel Taylor Rye uh, review coming out soon. Uh, probably be doing a, I think the Old Tub, which I'm supposed to be getting. I think Rebecca Page is helping me get one of those. Uh, and um, yeah, just a lot of stuff coming. Also the finals. For the top 10 uh, bourbon sold by Drizzly. Uh, so, yeah. So to sign off tonight, I'm going to give a little bit of bottle chug of the Jephtha. Because this bottle has to go. So, uh, with that, cheers guys. Thank you for everything. It was an epic night. I'll see you next week right here on the Mash and Drum. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So, cheers guys. And I'll see you uh, next week. Take care, everybody. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, so bad. Oh, so bad. Good night, everybody. Ugh.